Wheeler family, do you know what today is? It is a celebration and a holiday indeed. That's right. Church family, we have the privilege as well as the pleasure 18 years ago of welcoming our senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Marcus D. Cosby, our first lady, as well as their family to the Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. And we don't have to tell you this, but after that, nothing was the same. Pastor Cosby, we want to take this opportunity to say thank you for your vision, your leadership, your fortitude, and your powerful prayers. And on behalf of the Wheeler Avenue News family, Pastor, happy 18th pastoral anniversary. Let the celebration begin. Wednesdays in the Word are back. And if you missed last week, then you missed a treat. We were blessed by Reverend Dr. Danielle Brown of Shiloh Baptist Church in Plainfield, New Jersey. Please join us this Wednesday, October 26th, for our final speaker, Reverend Dr. Lance D. Watson of St. Paul's Baptist Church in Richmond, Virginia. We're excited to bring to Wheeler Avenue some truly phenomenal preachers who will help us celebrate and experience revival. On Saturday, October 29th, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., we will have our Harvest Festival 2022 for our children and youth. As always, we will have plenty of candy and fun activities for everyone. This year, the youth will have a special hangout, so make sure you bring the entire family. Children and youth, don't forget to bring something to hold all that wonderful candy. On the first Tuesday of each month in the 2022-2023 church year, the WABC Marriage Ministry will provide marriage enrichment sessions. We are presenting discussion topics that are valuable to marriage to develop and enhance your marriage. We look forward to having all married couples at WABC make a commitment to invest time in this forum and your marriage. The Wheeler Avenue Young Adult Ministry invites you to Friendsgiving Brunch. Connect with young adults over food and fellowship on Saturday, November 12th at 1130 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. You can register at www.willerbc.org. Attention veterans on the avenue. You're invited to join us for an appreciation dinner for your service in observance of Veterans Day on Sunday, November 13th. RSVP online at wheelerbc.org or email Reverend Barbara Williams at bwilliams at wheelerbc.org. All children, youth, and college students in need of academic assistance are invited to register for support via our tutoring ministry. The ministry has been blessed with gifted tutors willing to share their time helping students succeed. Please email tutor at willerbc.org with any questions. To register for tutoring, please visit our website. The Brook Bible Study presents revelation and relaxation every Thursday. All college students are invited to come over for food, fun, and fellowship at 7 p.m. Contact Reverend Richard Boone at rboone at wheelerbc.org for more information. So my boss was telling me that we're seeking volunteers for the media production ministry and the photography ministry. And I was like, I'm here all the time. I can do it. So I wanted to showcase my skills on the jib camera. I think with a little more training I would have gotten it, but I just don't think it's my ministry. So I decided to take my talents over to the photography ministry. I take really pretty pictures. I don't think you're supposed to be taking selfies. I think you're supposed to be taking pictures of the congregation. Oh, she didn't really understand the vision. Please sign up to volunteer for the media production ministry and the photography ministry. Apparently, I can't do it by myself. There's so much taking place, and we hope you stay connected. For more information, follow us on Flocknote, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, or you can check out our church app. I'm Philandria Wilson. And I'm Andre Kahn Jr. And this has been your Avenue, Avenue News. News. Remember, we are Wheeler wherever. Church family, it's time for worship. I'm going to stay 
here and trust God to work this out until I have the victory over my adversity.
This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. He's been mighty, mighty good. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing I desire of the Lord, that I seek after, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple because he's been mighty, mighty, mighty good. Clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto our God with a voice of triumph to our good and our great God. You've been good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, keep glad happening in those hands and in your spirit as we go to this mighty good God in a time of prayer. Those that we are praying for on our bereaved family list is Sister Felicia Adams and family in the passing of her brother. Sister Tamara Adams and family in the passing of her sister. Sister Kimberly Agnew Borders in the past, in the family, in the passing of her mother, Sister Paula Krishan and her family in the passing of her mother, Sister Elena Huckleby in the passing of her son, Sister Rhonda Belt Ray and family in the passing of her mother-in-law. Other health concerns we lift and that'll be scrolled on the screen. Every time we come to God, we have to come believing. We don't come to a God wavering in doubt. We don't come to somebody who we think has power. We come to somebody we know has power. So whatever your giant is, Know that your God is thousand eon times as bigger than your giant. So we come before the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Let's pray. To the sovereign and immutable God, to the great I am, to the God who kept and was good yesterday, who's keeping and is good today and will keep and be good tomorrow and forevermore. To the just God, to the Elohim, to the God who is, to the God who was, to the God who forever shall be. Hallelujah and blessed be your name. We come to the one who slayed the lamb before the foundations of the world. We come to the one who have hewn out the depths of the sea and formed the mountains and put the stars in their place. We come to the one who gave the sun its shine and the moon its glow. We come to the one who hangs the curtains of the sky like curtains. We come to a God who said, let there be. We come to a God who hewn the dust and breathed life into that dust and made humanity so we are fearfully and wonderfully made we come to a God who has healing in the touch of his garment we come to a God for whom nothing is impossible we come to a God who can raise the dead heal the sick pay bills and give us greater than we could have ever imagined 
so I thank you now that there is no identity crisis for if he or she is in the Lord they are a new creature the old has passed away yet behold all is new we come on this day to bless your name we thank you for putting the set man our pastor the Reverend Dr. Marcus D. Cosby in this house we celebrate you for the gift you have given us now God take us higher now God take us higher now God take us deeper and make us your disciples for we want to praise worship and celebrate the God who keeps us holds us comforts us takes care of us and forgives us for you we live and for you we die so now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can think ask or imagine according to the power that is at work within us by the power in the name of Jesus hallelujah and amen Oh yes, it's in that name that we pray this morning, hallelujah. Wonderful Jesus, we bless you this morning, hallelujah. It is your goodness, God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I will sing of the goodness of God Come on, help me say all of my You know this will lift your voice.
Stand for the reading of our word, reading of the word. Our scripture for this morning is coming from the book of Psalms, Psalm 14. I'll be reading from the New International Version. The Bible says, The fool says in his heart there is no God they are corrupt their deeds are vile there is no one who does good the Lord looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if there are any who understand any who seek God all have turned away all have become corrupt there is no one who does good not even one do all these evildoers know nothing? They devour my people as though eating bread. They never call on the Lord. But there they are, overwhelmed with dread. For God is present in the company of the righteous. You evildoers frustrate the plans of the poor, but the Lord is their refuge. Oh, that salvation for Israel will come out of Zion. When the Lord restores his people, let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. To God be the glory for God's holy word. Good morning, church family. Will you please remain standing for our morning hymn, which is, Oh, How I Love Jesus. Is there anyone in the building who loves Jesus on this morning? We love him because he first loved us, loved us. Let's sing together. There is a name. Is a name I love to hear. I love to, I love to sing his word. Love to sing his word. It sounds like music. It sounds like you. In my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Let us all live that refrain and say, Oh, how I love Jesus. Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. It tells me of a Savior's love. Who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood. The sinner's perfect blue. Hallelujah. Lift it again and say, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. And the main reason is because he first. It tells me what my father has. In store for me every day. And though I tread this dark path, it's still your sunshine. All the way. Hallelujah. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. I love him. I love him this morning. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Last verse. It tells of one whose loving heart can feel my deepest woe. Who in each sorrow bears a part that none can bear me low. Let's say it together. Oh, how I love Jesus. Put your hands together like that. Oh, how I love Jesus. And it's because he first loved me. Let's say it again. Oh, how I love Jesus. 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 Oh,
first? Because he first loved me. Because he first loved me. Come on, if you love the Lord, why don't you show some sign? Why don't you bless the Lord on this day? This is the day that the Lord our God has made, and we've come to rejoice and be glad in it. What a joy it is to greet you on this Sunday, my sisters, my brothers, and I am delighted, especially this day, to welcome special guests who may be present with us. I'm going to ask that if you are worshiping with us for the very first time, if you're a first time visitor to the Wheeler Avenue Church, would you stand so that we might honor your presence among us, any of our first time friends, amen. To God be the glory, amen. God be praised for you one and all. You should be able to tell by the response of the brothers and sisters that we are delighted that you have opted to worship with us on this Sunday. On behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Marcus D. Cosby, our founding pastor emeritus, and the entirety of the church family known as Wheeler Avenue, allow for me to express to each of you just how excited we are that you've chosen to worship with us this Sunday. If you have a church home, please let them know that we are excited about your presence and worship on this day. However, if you do not have a church home, we pray that you would truly be blessed by the entirety of this experience of worship. We want for you to make yourselves at home, but we would love to call you our sisters, our brothers in this family of faith and body of believers. Whatever your reality is, we are genuinely excited that you opted to worship with us this day, and we can prove it to you right now. Church family, help me thank God one more time for these brothers, these sisters who worship with us for the very first time. God be praised. Listen, as you take your seats, do me a favor, text the number 77411 with one word, visit WABC. Text that phrase to, to visit WABC to 77411. That'll allow our pastor to write you a letter later on formally expressing his delight with your presence in worship. But on his behalf and need, on the entire behalf of the family, we are excited about your presence. And we thank God for each of you who tunes in and worships with us virtually. We thank God that you've opted to worship with us on this day. If it's your very first time and you're on YouTube or Facebook, let us know. There are brothers in the chat who will warm greet you with the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and let you know about their delight to worship with you even virtually on this day. We are Wheeler wherever and we thank God for all of the family of faith who is streaming and worshiping with us virtually. Help me thank God for those who are virtual on this Sunday. Listen, as you well know, today is no ordinary day on the avenue. We are delighted that on this day we get the privilege, the honor, the ability to celebrate the said man of this house, the angel of this house, the shepherd of this house, the pastor of this house, the visionary of this house, the leader of this house. We thank God on this day for 18 phenomenal years of pastoral leadership under the Reverend Dr. Marcus D. Cosby. Come on, let's make some noise for our pastor. Do you know what today is? It's his anniversary. We thank God for 18 wonderful years of leadership, and we thank God that eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard what God has in store for us as a consequence of our leader on this day. Let's sing happy anniversary to our pastor. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Amen, amen, and many more, and many more. We are delighted to honor him on this day, and we cannot honor him appropriately without thanking God for the entirety of the first family. And we thank God for Mrs. Cosby. We thank God for Mrs. Adrian Gaines. We thank God for Miss Ashley Cosby. We thank God for Mr. Marcus Cosby, Mr. Matthew Cosby, Miss Aaliyah Cosby, Grandma Bobby Cosby, the entirety of the Cosby family. We thank God for. Amen. Amen. So many of you are wearing that special color in honor of Mrs. Cosby, and we thank God for that. Listen, let's continue in worship. We have great worship planned this day, and we pray that you would engage in it as we continue to worship our one true living God, who is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen? Amen. Oh, yes, it's time to bless him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo! 
God, we love you today. Wonderful Jesus, wonderful Jesus. to myself if you've been drawn to Jesus will you help me celebrate Jesus 
on a Sunday morning. If you know him as your Lord, your liberator, the lover of your soul, help me lift up Jesus for a little while longer. He's worthy of all the glory, all of the honor, and all the praise. And this Sunday morning, we come to lift the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I thank God for him. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. It is a joy to see you on this fourth Sunday of the month of October in the year of our Lord, 2022. And I give God great praise for this great church known as Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. If you love your church, show some sign. If you love your church, show some sign. You've been kind to me, but if you love your church, if you love the Lord Jesus, the Lord of the church, will you show some sign? To God be the glory. To God be the glory for the great things our God has done. How we honor the Lord today for this wonderful privilege of gathering together in this sacred space known as the Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church Cathedral. And I'm grateful to God for the privilege that he has afforded each of us to gather together today as we continue to press our way through this last quarter of 2022. We're headed toward the fifth Sunday and then the, the months of November and December. And I'm excited that God has brought us safe thus far. We've had some twists and turns along the way, but I'm grateful that God has brought us safe thus far. Let me thank you so much for your kindness extended to the Cosby crew. Uh, we are certainly delighted that, um, really to be sure, honestly, it was 24 and a half years ago that God led us to this place. And uh, from that day until this, we've been so immensely blessed by the fellowship and the love of this congregation. And for these 18 years, you've allowed me to serve you, and I'm so grateful for the privilege. Amen. I'm honored to serve as your pastor. It is a joy, it is a delight, and I thank God that every single day I get the privilege of claiming membership in the Wheeler Avenue family, and I get to tell everybody that they honor me, you honor me to serve as your pastor. Thank you so much for that. The Cosby Crew is better because of you, and I'm certainly, certainly grateful that you've allowed us to, to have the kind of life that we live and to be able to be in fellowship with you. Mrs. Cosby had to go get my mother this morning and I want you to be in prayer for her continually, uh, for my mother, but she, they're on their way, so please be in prayer uh, for all of us as we continue to do that, which the Lord has assigned to our hands for such a time as this. I want to thank God for the wonderful things that have happened for these past two Saturdays. We have had Bible boot camp on this campus. And it's been great. Uh, you can see by the response uh, that it's been great. Usually when an event has passed, we don't go back and retrieve it in morning worship. But it was so good these past two Saturdays. I've gotten so many responses that I just want to thank God for our clergy who helped us to have a phenomenal Bible boot camp. And for every attendee who came to be a part of the experience. God bless you and I pray uh, that you will pass every pop quiz that I give you over the next several weeks with regard to any subject in the Word of God. Amen. 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 Yeah. How many books in the Bible? All right. Good job. Good job. How many in the Old Testament? Uh, 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 uh. You're loud and not quite right. I mean, you said it with your chest, though. You said it like you meant that thing. But it was good. Try it again. How many in the Old Testament? 39. How many in the New Testament? 27. What's the first book of the Bible? What's the last book of the Bible? What's the first book of the Old Testament? What's the first book of the New Testament? What's the last word in the Bible? Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. God bless you. The, 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 uh, the pop quizzes will continue. All right. Let's be ready for them. That was about an 85. That's pretty good. About an 85. We'll keep going. All right. Wednesdays in the Word have been off the chain. Wednesdays in the Word have been phenomenal. 
So grateful to all of these preachers who have come to be with us over these last three Wednesdays. And we'll shut it down this, this coming Wednesday with one of our gifts, one of the blessings to this church, the Reverend Dr. Lance Watson. We invite you to come and be a part of Wednesdays in the Word right here in the Lord's house on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. And I hope that you will share with us. It's going to be an absolutely phenomenal time. And I hope that you will be a part of that experience uh, at 7 p.m. But I know that all of our Wednesdays start at 6 a.m., right? All of our Wednesdays start at 6 a.m. in prayer. And so dial into the prayer line. Dial into the prayer line. I want to pray with you on Wednesday morning at 6 o'clock. We'll gather together here in the cathedral at 6 p.m. for prayer. And then at 7 o'clock, we'll begin worship. And I hope that you will be here uh, for the experience. How many know that it's voting season? You know it's voting season? Yes, Lord. This is one of the most consequential votes that we will ever make, or one of the most consequential elections in which we will be involved and engaged. And I want to make sure that everyone who is registered to vote at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church goes out to vote, goes out to vote. Early voting begins tomorrow, is that right? Early voting begins tomorrow. And so we invite every saint of God, every person who understands that we are whole individuals and we are responsible not just to the congregation but to the community. We're responsible to make sure that the civic engagement that we and that we endeavor to participate in is governed properly is governed properly and so I'm going to invite you to get a voter guide all the voters guides are in the narthex the atrium and you can pick one up before you leave today the the, the election the ballot is extremely long in this in this cycle it's extremely long so you need to go in we're not just voting for governor we're voting for judges. We're voting for all those who guide us, who lead us. So take the entire sample ballot into the poll with you. Take it with you. You can fill it out. You can take the sample ballot into the poll with you. That means you do some homework. You prepare yourself before you go in. And you can take the entirety of the sample ballot in there with you. And you can fill out all that. Now get the voter guide so you know who is on the, the ballot, right? Who you're voting for and what their platform is, all right? In my estimation, we need a change in Austin. And I hope that you will help us to do the very best that we can to make this a state that is governed for all people, governed for all of the residents of this state. And I hope that you will do that. Get yourself a voter guide and let's make a difference in this election. Let the church say amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right. Well, it's time to give unto the Lord. It's offering time in the Lord's house and we're excited about giving. Just before we do that, just before we do that, I know that today is, um, is the 18th celebration of my installation. I thank God for that. Uh, 18 years ago, I was installed as pastor in this place. Look at that lady in mine coming down that aisle right there. Praise God for her. Praise God for my mother. Amen. We celebrate with them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, if it wasn't for her, wouldn't be able to do what I do. But I thank God for the privilege of serving you because she has been such a blessing. Thank you, ma'am. We appreciate you, ma'am. Mrs. Cosby, Audrey Marie Cosby. All this green, I didn't know y'all were gonna have on all this green and black and gold. That's pretty cool. Thank you so much for, for being so sweet, so sweet. I appreciate you, but I also want to let you know it's, it's Clergy Appreciation Month. Many of you have been sending cards all month long. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for that. But I want to appreciate uh, the clergy of our, of our staff because these brothers and sisters help me to do my job well. Reverend Alexander E.M. Johnson, stand up man. Praise God for our executive pastor, for the work that he does to make sure this place is run well. To the senior stateswoman, the Reverend Dr. Barbara Eustace Williams, celebrated her 79th birthday yesterday. 79 yesterday. And we thank God for the longest standing clergy member, staff member, aside from Dr. Barbara. He has been the youth minister, and then we got too old for that. We made him the seniors minister. The Reverend Dr. Jacques D. Dinkins, will you help me thank God for him? Amen. He's been taking care of the marriages of our church for some years now. Help me thank God for Pastor David Moore. Reverend David Moore, stand up, man. 
Thank you. Y'all, she prays for us every single day. I know it to be true. The Reverend Dr. B Lakeisha R. Barnett, youth, I'm sorry, young adult and prayer, young adult and prayer. She takes care of every bereaved family. She tends to the sick. She is the Reverend Janella Piles. Will you help me thank God for her? He makes sure that the youth of our church love the Lord, and we thank God for the Reverend Richard A. Boone the Fourth. Amen. And he just got here a day and a half ago, but he's been blessing us in Bible study. The Reverend David Maurice Roberts, our Christian education minister, now celebrating three or four months with us, and we thank God for that. Help me praise God for the preachers who make sure that we know the Word of God, that we are prayed for, that we are cared for. I can't do this without help. And although he is not a licensed preacher, he is not ordained to preach, he sure is a minister. And we thank God for Minister Leon Christopher Lewis. And all of these wonderful sisters and brothers who sing and dance and play, thank God for you. And to the entirety of the staff of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church, will you thank God for the folk who keep this place going every single day, every single day. I just want to appreciate our clergy, want to appreciate our staff. I want to appreciate those who make sure that the work that is done with excellence is done for the glory of God. And then I've got an assistant. I don't know where she is. I know she's somewhere around here. But um, I would be absolutely schizophrenic if it was not for Mrs. Andrea Tucker who makes sure that the office of the pastor runs well. And I want to thank God for her and for the work that she does. I do this because no one, no one who, um, uh, who is blessed to serve in a position like the one I serve in can do any of it by him or herself. And I wanna be clear that everybody knows that if it wasn't for the support of these sisters and brothers, we would not have the kind of church that we have. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for all that you do to make our church what it is. And in the next service, we may as well do it in this service, but in the next service, he'll be here. But the man who got it all started is our founder, and we thank God for the one and only inimitable Dr. William Alexander Lawson, and we praise God for him, even in absentia. Amen, amen. Well, it's time to honor the Lord with our gifts, and so won't you get your gifts ready as we prepare to present them unto the Lord. I'm excited that we have the opportunity to give back to God a portion of what God has given to us. And as we give these gifts today, we remember that we are a tithing church. We believe in the principle of tithing. The Bible says that we are to give the tithe, first 10% of our increase unto the Lord. And when we do that, God says, if you just trust me, test me with the tithe, I'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. God honors our faithfulness with the tithe, and we thank God for his faithfulness toward us. These ushers are moving toward, you're moving about us now, and if you need a, an envelope, we invite you to utilize these envelopes to put your paper gifts in. If you're using the digital platforms, as has been our custom over these last few years, please do that, but let's continue to honor the Lord and to serve the Lord with gladness through the presentation of our tithes and offerings. The tithe, the offering, the gifts to missions and mercy, and the gifts to the building effort are all going to this God of ours as we honor him through the presentation thereof. And as we prepare to give, let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks because every good and perfect gift comes from you. You're the father of light. In you there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. You are faithful to us. And we thank you for your great faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies we see. <laughs> All we have needed, your hand hath provided. Great is your faithfulness to each and every one of us. And we thank you for that on this Sunday morning. And now as we honor you, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you receive from our hands what you first placed into them. Receive our tithes as a response to your faithfulness with regard to our income. Receive our offerings as a response to your faithfulness, to your goodness, and we go beyond the minimum requirement 
to show to you how much we love you and appreciate you. Receive now our gifts to missions and mercy. We want to be a blessing to somebody else. There's so many who are less fortunate than we, and we want to ensure their progress as well. Receive our gifts to the building effort so that in all things, we might be a debt-free church, so we might serve you even the more with the resources that you pour into this place. And we thank you for victory in our finances. We thank you that no one will lack as a consequence of what they give in this offering today. But you will return to your sons and daughters so that we might have the testimony of our elders that we can't beat God giving no matter how we try. We thank you for victory in our finances and we'll say it till we see it in Jesus' name. Amen and praise the Lord. Well, it's music time. I see a friend of mine who surprised us, surprised me uh, by coming to be a part of worship. I'm going to let the music ministry handle that. But I also see a friend of mine to this side of the room, the Reverend Dr. Howard John Wesley. And I'm so grateful for his presence among us. Amen. He has been in this place, save the time of the pandemic. He has been in this room every fourth Sunday in October for the past 19 years. Not this room, but on this campus for the 19 years since the pastoral installation of 2004. The, um, the pandemic took him away from us for two years, but I'm so grateful that he, no, just one, was it two years or one year? Maybe two years, okay, one year, but I'm so grateful that he has returned today to be a part of our experience of worship. I clearly call him the co-pastor of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church, and I'm grateful that I have the privilege of serving as the co-pastor of the Alfred Street Baptist Church in Alexandria, Virginia. He's going to preach. We know he's well able, so won't you pray for him as he prepares to preach to us today? today, the senior pastor of the Alfred Street Baptist Church, my beloved brother for more than 40 years, the Reverend Dr. Howard John Wesley, receive him with joy after our ministry of music gives us leadership. Good morning again, church family. It is my joy, my delight, my honor, my privilege, and my pleasure to stand before you and first say on behalf of the music and fine arts ministry and the production team, Pastor Cosby, happy 18th anniversary, sir. Secondly, I want to introduce to you our guest psalmist for the day. She hails from the city of Kansas City, Missouri, but she is no doubt anointed and she loves the Lord. And I'll conclude my introduction by saying this. Every year, Pastor Cosby, Reverend Johnson and I and a few of the clergy uh, get a chance to go to the Hampton Ministers Conference. At that conference, we get a chance. At that conference, we get a chance to kind of just kind of hang out and go to lunch, and eat that kind of thing, right? So, we're at lunch one day, and we're talking about uh, artists that we like, and that sort of thing. And I asked Pastor Cosby, "So, when you're traveling, who is a psalmist that you love to minister with?" Minister with? And he says, "Without question, every time I'm in the same place with Miss Crystal Rucker, we always have a great time." So I present to you today, Ms. Crystal Rucker. Please receive her as she ministers to us on this morning. Come on and clap your hands if you love Jesus. Come on and clap your hands if you love Jesus. Come on and clap your hands if you love Jesus. Hallelujah. He's a great God and he's greatly to be praised. I give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to Dr. Cosby. Happy anniversary to the entire Cosby family. I just want to sing this. I am saved. Yes. Just thought I'd let y'all know. I'm sanctified and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. And I'm glad to be in Wheeler this morning. I'm honored to be here. But I just want to say this. We all need God's grace. I don't care how saved you are. We all need God's grace. Turn to your neighbor and say, I never could have made it without his grace.
God! 
sui Yes, Lord The sound Y'all sing with me Sister Crystal, there is a third verse of my favorite hymn. It says, Oh, to grace, how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. All of us are indebted to the grace of God. No matter how big your resume or your salary may be, you are indebted to the grace of God. Beloved, you may be seated. Grace and peace be unto you. From God who loves us as mother and father. And Jesus Christ who always and alone is our resurrected, our risen, our reigning, and our returning redeemer. To my beloved friend of some almost four decades now who honors me deeply beyond what I merit to stand and to share on this special occasion as we did some 18 years ago and prior to that in youth revival. It's an amazing thing to think that my first sermon at Wheeler was when I was eligible for youth revival. <laughs> and now with 50 in the rearview mirror, God is good. And I thank my friend for this invitation I pray that you never take for granted the amazing gift of God's grace in your presence through the voice and the preaching of one of the best to ever do the daggone thing. If you know that there ain't nobody like Marcus D. Cosby and that you gather in this place because of the grace and anointing on his life, would you help me just honor him? I know we've stood and celebrated, but there's no way to thank God enough for my friend, as he is a blessing to you, he is a blessing across the breadth of the body of Christ and the kingdom of our Jesus in this world. He blesses the Alpha Street Baptist Church every fourth Sunday in September when he comes to celebrate our anniversary as pastor and people. 
And every time he comes, I take the next Sunday off so that there would be no undue comparison between myself and Pastor Cosby. Of course, as we honor him, I want to thank God for those who love and live with him and bear the legacy of Cosby, from Mother Cosby to all the Cosby clan, and especially to Sister Audrey Cosby on today. Sister, congratulations to you as well. We know he doesn't do it by himself. It's a joy to see all of you adorned in that emerald green to honor your first lady. The black and gold, not so much. It makes my stomach hurt to see. Because every good brother wears crimson and cream. That's all I'm, that's all I'm trying to say. To those on staff and in sanctuary who share the blessing and the burden of preaching God's holy word, to those who blessed us in music, both in the choir loft and with Mr. Leon and Sister Crystal, we thank God for how they have ushered us into the presence of our God. And to all you, my brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the power of your word that you stepped into nothingness and spoke. And when creation heard your voice, everything that you said be had to become. God, I thank you for your written word, our lamp unto our feet and the light unto our path. And because we sometimes misinterpret it, I thank you for the incarnate word, our Christ. And as we mimic and model him in our daily living, we align ourselves with your will and your word. God, I beseech the power of the Holy Spirit to preach your word to those who've come not only to hear your word, but to do it also. That in due season, we all may reap the fruit of your word. For your word, we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As we begin this sermonic Sunday of celebrating the Reverend Dr. Marcus D. Cosby, I thought it appropriate by the guidance of the Holy Spirit to begin our journey in what I know to be one of his, if not the favorite book of the Bible for him, the book of Psalms. Um, one of the reasons the book of Psalms is so near and dear to your pastor as it should be to all of us is because the Psalms resonate with every reality of our lives. In Cliff Note Version, there's nothing you go through that the Psalms don't speak to. Maybe that's why Jesus quotes the Psalms more than any other book of the Bible. Because the Psalms not only inspire us, but they instruct us. Somebody needs to hear this because you may have been hoodwinked to believe that the Psalms are just about praising God. Praise is appropriate, but when you live long enough, there will be some moments when praise ain't really on your agenda. I, I, I know it's Sunday and you got to act like all you know is hallelujah. But when you live long enough, you'll come to church and a man ain't the first word out your mouth. And the Psalms speak to that. There are Psalms of despair where the Psalmist asks the question, how can I praise God with all this going on? There are Psalms of lament and sorrow written from the depth of one traveling through the valley of the shadow of death. There are these unique psalms called the imprecatory psalms. Psalms of anger. Because you ain't got to hide when you worship God. And one of my mentors said that our prayers ought to be as messy as our lives. 
that sometimes the Psalms lift up these songs of anger, wishing God to bring revenge on those who have mistreated us. And then there's this one special Psalm that raises a difficult reality that we don't deal with often in church. And I came by to teach from it this morning and if we find some preaching along the way, so be it. Th th this Psalm, I'm gonna let you choose where you read it from. You can choose either Psalm 14 or Psalm 53, it's your choice. Because when you get to Psalm 14 and or Psalm 53, you will find that they both read exactly the same. Yes, Psalm 14 and Psalm 53 simply begin like this. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Since I'm at Wheeler, that's enough. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Do me a favor. Look at someone next to you on your pew and tell them, neighbor, neighbor. oh neighbor, oh, neighbor. Don't, don't be a fool. As you come out of Bible boot camp, learning the basics of scripture. When you pass 101 and get to 202, one of the great Bible studies you can engage in is to understand how the Psalms are used in the book of Psalms and outside as well. Without a shadow of a doubt, the book of Psalms are quoted outside of the Psalter more than any other book. Jesus, Paul, the prophets have all read the Psalms and memorized many of them and quote them in their own independent works. The Psalms are quoted outside the Psalter. Inside the Psalter, there are certain phrases that are repeated time and again in the book of Psalms. Teach, Pastor Wesley. <laughs> the phrase, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Crystal, that shows up repeatedly in multiple Psalms. Leon will tell you, for his mercy endures forever. You can find that repeatedly in the Psalms. Praise ye the Lord. That, that shows up time and time again. The Psalms are repeated outside the Psalter. There are certain phrases that are repeated inside the Psalms. And it may surprise you that some Psalms are actually the combination of other Psalms that they've borrowed from. Do your Bible study when you get home. Psalm 70 borrows a chunk of Psalm 40. Psalm 71 leans heavily on Psalm 31. Psalm 108 is a combination of Psalm 57 and Psalm 60 put together. The Psalms are repeated outside the Psalter. Certain phrases are repeated inside. And some Psalms are the combination of other Psalms they borrow from. But what may surprise you is that there is only one psalm in all 150 that is repeated verse for verse. Within the psalms, there's only one that shows up twice. Only one psalm finds itself not just in one place, but in another place as if someone decided to Xerox it and place it twice in the Psalter. There's only one psalm that shows up twice. And it may surprise you. It's not Psalm 30 that weeping only endures for a night. 
It ain't 27. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. It ain't 100, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. It ain't, it ain't 150, let everything that breath praise the Lord. It's not 23, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. The only psalm that is repeated nearly word for word is Psalm 14, which shows up in Psalm 53. The only psalm that is repeated says this, the fool said in his heart, there is no God. That's the only one that shows up twice. Can I teach Bible? It is important for you to know that the psalms were these songs on scrolls that between 500 BC and 70 AD were collated and put together by the editors of Israel. In a real sense, they came together and they took all the singles and made an album. And the album was called The Psalter. And they were very intentional about how these psalms were structured. They're divided into five books to mirror the five books of the laws of Moses. They put together certain groupings of psalms like the Hallel songs that, that begin and end with the phrase hallelujah. They gathered together the psalms of ascent that they would sing on their way to it, on their way to Jerusalem, and they put all those together. They structured the psalm with intentionality. The psalms are not random. They decided to put them together. There's a reason it starts with Psalm 1. Blessed is the man to the woman. Act like you read that one. There, there's intentionality to it. And these editors who put the Psalms together knew good and daggone well that Psalm 53 had already showed up in Psalm 14 and they let there be a duplicate anyway. And it's the only one they allowed to be duplicated. For some reason, they decided that when you read these songs of praise, the one you ought to read twice. Goes like this, the fool said in his heart, there is no God. I don't know why they did but the re repetition of the reality of Psalm 14 and 53 about the fool saying there is no God raises a difficult reality we don't talk about in church. That is the reality of agnosticism and atheism. Agnosticism, this Doubting the reality of God. Atheism, the rejection of the reality of God. Agnosticism is to doubt that there is a God. Atheism is to deny the reality of God. And this psalm raises a difficult reality that all of us must deal with, and that is the relevance of atheism, not only in the world, not only in the streets, but sometimes in the sanctuary. Pew Research says that over the last seven years, atheism has grown some 10% in American culture. And if I was a betting man, I'd be willing to bet that each and every one of you knows somebody who may not simply doubt God, but denies God. All y'all know some atheists. 
They're on your job. They're in your family. They might be on your pew. You know the atheist, the one you avoid having conversation with because they get on your nerves trying to prove to you that God ain't real. And the truth be told, we would rather just avoid atheism. Agnostics and atheists are all around us. The fool said in his heart, there's no God. Can, can, can I help you? you? You need to be careful how you use the word fool. Don't be a fool with fool. The word fool in Hebrew is this term naval, and naval does not mean unwise. Naval does not mean unintelligent. Naval does not mean stupid. It would not be wise to say Sigmund Freud was stupid. It's not wise to say that Emil Durkheim was unintelligent. You cannot look at Stephen Hawking and say he was dumb. Some of the most stout, devout atheists were also some of the smartest folk this world has ever known. You can be intelligent and still not believe in God. You can have degrees on your wall and doubt that God is real. Naval does not mean unintelligent. Naval does not mean immoral. Atheists are not inherently evil people. As a matter of fact, you know an atheist who's a good brother. You know an atheist, she's kind to folk. And if I be honest with you, there's some atheists I would rather hang out with than some of y'all. Because Christians can be some ugly acting, mean and nasty, lionist, rumorinist folk that you didn't ever wanted to deal with. I would take a good atheist over some of y'all any Friday afternoon. Naval, fool, does not mean unintelligent. It does not mean immoral. You've got to be careful using the word fool when you're dealing with an atheist or an agnostic because they ain't stupid. They're not immoral. And using the term fool is derogatory and offensive and you will never be able to engage in a productive relationship with anyone you call a fool. The danger of the church is that we are quick to judge someone's destination without understanding the journey that led them there. You might as well preach our John. Uh, don't call me a fool if you don't know what steps led me here. Stop casting me to hell without taking time to understand the road I've been walking on. Stop telling me what I ain't until you understand what I've been through. Because until you understand my journey, you will never understand my destination. How does someone become an atheist? What is the road that leads there? Now, I can understand if you're born in a country or society where God is not inherently believed. I understand growing up in China and being an atheist. 
But what I can understand is how the writer of the Psalms recognizes that they are atheists in Israel. Because God is inherent in Israel. How do you grow up in an environment where God is inherently believed and you deny God's reality? How can you grow up in an America where you cite the Pledge of Allegiance, one nation <laughs> under God, you don't believe in God? How can you be raised around Christians and Jews and Muslims every day and not believe in God? How can you grow up in a community where there's a good Baptist and apostolic church on every corner and you not believe in God? How can you come from a family where your grandmama prayed in tongues and you don't believe in God? What is the road that leads to verse 1? Well, the psalmist gives us a little indication if you keep on reading. The psalmist says, there it is, the reason the fool is said in his heart, there is no God. The Bible says in verse 1, verse 3, and verse 4, they've been dealing with the reality of the presence of evil. And their exposure to evil has caused them to doubt the reality of God. C come on, come on. This ain't just in Psalm 14. This is 2022 that they've experienced something and it left them wondering, how can there be a God? And this happened. How can there be a God? And this go down in my life. They are struggling with the reality of an evil that they have experienced that is in contradiction to the God they've been preached about and they can't hold them together. And in seminary talk, this is what we call theodicy. Theodicy, T-H-E-O-D-I-C-Y. We don't check our brain when we come to Alfred's, uh, Wheeler Avenue. Theodicy, somebody say theodicy. Theodicy is trying to make sense of unjustified evil. You know what theodicy is in a real sense? It's getting to that place where you ask God, why? And ain't none of us immune from that place. I know you're holy, your Bible's big, and you can sing the third verse of the hymn, but all of us have had some theodicy moments. Theodicy is when an infant is born with cancer and given just a few moments to live. Why? Theodicy is when a loved one who was good was out minding their business and they were killed by gun violence. God, how could you let that happen? The Odyssey is turning on the news and finding out that there's another demonic-minded school shooting that has left hundreds of children dead, and you're sitting there wondering, God, where the were you? The Odyssey is when you've been praying for God to do something, and the worst still happens in your life. Theodicy is when you witness bad things happen to good people. Theodicy is when here you are coming to church, trying to live your life right, reading your Bible, praying your prayers, singing Amazing Grace, being nice to folk you don't even like on general Christian principle. You ain't slapping folk like they deserve. You ain't cussing like you used to. And you are going through hell. And you got a neighbor who can't even spell Jesus. And every time you look up, they got a new boo in the bed, a new Benz in the driveway, and a new check in the mail. And you trying to figure out how could God <laughs> have
Have you ever had a theodicy moment? Well, you can't understand how God could let this happen to you. Theodicy challenges people's conception of God. But beloved, I, I came to mess with your mind a little bit and ask you to think. And I'll tell you like I tell Alpha Street, my job ain't to make you think what I think. It's just to make you think. What, what do we mean when we say God? What is God? Who is God? Then when you think of God, do you think of a Zeus-like character that sits on a throne with this host that just looks down? Is that what God is to you? For the person who wrestles, the traditional understanding of God revolves around three characteristics. Go on to preach, Howard John. Number one, is omnipotent that whatever God is if God can't do everything that ain't God if, if his hands are tied and he's unable then, then that ain't God that, that in order for me to believe it's God you got to be able to do everything you got to be able to calm every storm. You got to be able to heal every sickness. You got to be able to move every mountain. You got to be able to open every closed door. And if you can't, then you ain't. God must be omnipotent. God must be omniscient. You got to know everything. If there's anything about my life that surprises you, you ain't God. If you can't see what I can't see, you ain't God. If you didn't know that was gonna happen, you can't be God. God must be omnipotent. God must be omniscient. And God must be love. You can't be evil and be God. You can't be unholy and be God. You can't side with that and be God. That you gotta handle me with love. If, if God ain't love, then God ain't. Hear me, so God must be omnipotent, omniscient, and loving. And in theodicy, one of those three is always questioned. <sighs> when I hit theodicy, either omnipotence, omniscience, or love is brought into question. So when my loved one is killed by a drunk driver, who walked away from the accident, I got to struggle. So if God is loving and cares for my loved one, and God is omniscient and knew it was going to happen, but they died anyway, then that means God ain't omnipotent. Because if you love me and you knew, why didn't you stop it? And if you could have stopped it, but didn't, does that now mean you're not loving? And if you could have stopped it, but you love me, did you not see it coming? And so in theodicy, one of those three is challenged. And in the minute you hit that crossroad, here come all the other stuff to push you from agnosticism to atheism. Now creeps in Darwin's theory of evolution. Suggests that God could not have made everything. 
Now comes in the lack of scientific evidence that a God exists. Now creeps in the debate about the accuracies and inaccuracies of scripture that caused me to doubt the word that leads me to God. Now comes in Sigmund Freud's proposition that religion ain't nothing but the opiate of the people to help you deal with the difficult realities of life and that faith ain't nothing more than imagination to help you see and think that somehow life has purpose because you're too afraid to die and therefore in your mind you've got to make up a God to help you get through everything. When you hit that crossroads, now comes in all the other stuff that pushes you to verse 1. The fool has said in his heart, that's how they get there. The reality of evil calls into question the character of God, and from there, all the other scientific evidence comes in. So Pastor Cosby, for every scientific, atheistic argument, there's a Christian response. And for every Christian response, there's an atheistic counter-argument. And for every atheistic counter-argument, there's another Christian theological argument. And the debate goes back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth. So how do you prove there's a God? I came here today to help us find a way to settle the debate of verse 1. Is there or is there not a God? Well, I just believe that, that the argument, in order to be effective, must follow the same methodology of the scientific one. Here, here's how you beat the scientific argument. You use their own method to prove that there is a God. Come here, I need you to know my undergrad degree is in engineering, so I want to share with you a little bit about scientific process. I, I want to lay it out for you, take you back to fifth grade with Sister Johnson in, in elementary school, and I want you to remember the scientific process. You ready? It's real simple. Make certain you catch it, though, because we're going to use it theologically in just a moment. It starts with a hypothesis. Um, and the hypothesis is... is is my, my assumption of a reality. Uh -huh. the, my hypothesis is my best guess. My hypothesis is, is my trying to explain something that's real in the world, but I don't know how, so I'm gonna make a guess as why it is. The hypothesis then demands experimentation. And Crystal, the experimentation ain't nothing but data collection because in order for me to know if my hypothesis is real, I gotta have some data to back up my hypothesis. So I begin with my hypothesis, which is my assumption. Then I begin my experimentation, which is my data development. And once I have my data, I then have to develop my data into what's called a theory. Be because my, my, my hypothesis was a guess, but if the data supports my hypothesis, then my theory is valid because my theory is based on the evidence of the data that came out of my experimentation from my hypothesis. So after my hypothesis begins my experimentation for my data development, my data development points me towards a theory. Now, the theory is just a theory until I see other evidence that allows me to know the theory is a law. Big Bang is a theory. Gravity is a law. And the reason gravity is a law is because there ain't no time when gravity has been proven not to be true. So I make my hypothesis, I gather my data, I come up with a theory, and then that theory has to be supported to become a law. May I share with you why I'm not a fool? It begins with my hypothesis. And my hypothesis is that there's a God. Now the psalmist argues this, I want you to read it in Psalm 14, 
and Psalm 53 that God is searching for those who want to seek for him. That the very beginning of the proof of God that distinguishes me from a fool is that I've made a choice to seek for God. Faith does not begin with what is proven. Faith begins with what is chosen. I made a choice to believe in God. Oh. <laughs> oh. Somebody today, you know you're at church today because you chose it. that you stood in a moment where God didn't make sense. You've seen theodicy, you've gone through hell, you had a prayer not answered, and in that moment, you still chose to believe in God. I need some folk that have been through the hell of life and made a decision that in that moment, I still choose Uh, Crystal, you know that song, I decided to make Jesus my, I wish I had a Bible reader, choose you this day. What you gonna believe? You gotta make the choice. Can I help you real quick? That's why the devil can't stand your sanctified self. Because with all the philosophy and all the science and all the doubt and all the denial that he put in your face, you still chose. My choice is my hypothesis. Y'all scaring me. Sit down. Y'all scaring me. I, uh, I can't preach like Cosby. Uh, God is not something that's proven. God is chosen. I chose to start with my hypothesis that there's a God. But now my hypothesis demands experimentation. Because now I need some data to back up my choice. You, you know, I told you Naval does not mean stupid. Naval does not mean immoral. And you've been waiting for me to tell you what Naval really means, right? Uh, I ain't lost you, I knew I was coming back to it. Naval in Hebrew, watch this, fool in Hebrew, it means empty. The empty has said. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna help you because you, you, you ain't figured it out yet. You know what empty is? Empty is reaching in your pocket and you ain't got no money. Now that don't mean that money don't exist. That just means that you ain't got none. Money is real, but you are empty, so you are a fool with money. Can I tell you why I believe in God? Because when I reach in the pocket of my life, there's too much data of what God has done. Yeah. When, when I reach in my life, you know what I pull out? I, I pull out the protection God has given. I ain't preaching for everybody right now, but, but there's some folk that know that there's some things that should have happened, but didn't happen. There's some tests that should have come back positive. 
but they came back negative. There was some hell that should have left you crazy. But somehow, some way, something happened and it kept you alive. Boy, boy, I haven't told this much, but on June of this year, your pastor was getting ready to preach at Hampton Ministers Conference. And because he's my friend, I was driving down to support him at Hampton. I woke up. in an ambulance. Come to find out, I had a seizure while I was driving. My car flipped over. The airbags exploded. I woke up in an ambulance. And the ambulance man looked at me, the medical technics, and this is what he said. You're lucky to be alive. The hell I am. No, no. This, this ain't luck. This ain't airbag. This ain't the car I was driving. The hand of God. I need some folk who know that if it had not been. I, I've got the protection he's given. And I've got the promises he's kept. Yo, 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 didn't everybody ain't gonna get this, but, but, but in my life, my life, has aligned itself with the Word of God one too many times for me to think it was random. Too many times what was meant for evil worked out for my good. Too many times my weeping last night turned into joy the next day. Too many times, the weapon formed against me. Too many times, I walked into a room of my enemies to find a table laid out before me. And because of the promises he's kept, I've got some data. Because of the protection he's provided, I've got some data. But can I tell you what else I got in my pocket? The prayers he's answered. Uh, I'll see y'all next year. But somebody can say amen right here. I, I've looked the worst in the eye and been told ain't no way. And all I could do was fall on my knees and call on God and ask the Lord to make a way out of no way. Now, if you ain't ever prayed, you can sit down. But if you've ever called on the Lord and you know that you know that you know, that you know that you know that you know, that the Lord heard your prayer. And didn't he answer? Didn't he go exceedingly? Um, um, so, so, my hypothesis is that God is real. My data is that he's kept me. My data is that he's been faithful. My data is that he answered prayer. So when I come in the wheeler, I now got a theory. And my theory is that God is good. All the time. My theory 
is that God is real because I can feel him in my soul. My theory is that they that wait Is there anybody here with a theory that God made a way, that God answered prayer? Okay, Pastor, I gotta go. Um, so, so my hypothesis is that he's real. My data leads to a theory that God is real. But when I come to church, my theory lines up with your theory and lines up with her theory, and lines up with his theory. And now I know that it ain't just a theory. That, that, that's why you all never be quiet about what the Lord has done. When pastor asks, is there anybody here that knows God made a way? You better raise your hand. If there's anybody here that knows God answered your prayer, you ought to raise your hand so that when I'm sitting in my pew, wrestling with my theory, I see your hand and her hand and his hand and her shout and his praise. And now I know that I know that God is a way maker. God is a healer. God is a provider. And when I leave Wheeler, after the benediction, ain't no doubt in my mind that God is real. God will hear. God will answer. God will provide. I need about four folk in Wheeler today who came in with a theory. But now that you've seen some praise and heard a testimony and saw him shout, you're going to leave with a law. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Do me a favor. Touch somebody and tell them, don't be a fool. Some things I may not know. There are some places I can't go, but I am sure of this one thing.
scorn. Some folk may scorn. All can desert. All can desert. And leave me alone. And leave me alone. But as for me. But as for me. There gonna be no fool. I'll take God's part. is real, For God is real. And, I can feel and I can feel him in my heart, him in my heart. come on let the church sing together yes oh, God is real yes God is real, yes, God is real. he's real in my, my soul, soul. church is open. It's like you go. Is there one who'll come this morning? Is there another who'll come this morning? Be a part of our church. Let's sing that third verse, please. I cannot tell. I cannot tell just how you felt. Just how you felt when Jesus took your sin away. Since that day, but since that day, yes, since that hour, yes, since that hour, God has been real. God has been real. For I can feel His holy power. Come on, church, everybody together. If you know it, sing. This Sunday morning, become a part of the family of God, the family of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. Is that what? The door of my father's house is open. The door of the Lord's church is open. Whoso will, let her, let him come. Is that what? Yes, God is real. thank God for this one who comes to be a part of our church family. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My dear sister, on behalf of our church, we say welcome to you, to your new church family. We're so grateful that God ordered your steps to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church, and we're excited about the days, weeks, months, and years that you'll spend here as a part of our church family. We want you to know that to God that you have chosen is real and you'll see theory after theory that is presented to you until it becomes a law down in your soul and we welcome you to your church family and we're so grateful that God has led you this way go with Deacon Matthews will you please Reverend Don Floyd is going to take you and take you some information from you so you can be a part of our church family Lord have mercy 
Lord have mercy. Don't sit down. We're about to go. We got to go to Sunday school or brunch or wherever you're going. Um, whew. I've told you, I've told you um, quite a few times that if you're, if you're the smartest one in your crowd, get another crowd, find some more people. I'm so glad I got a smart joker in my crowd. And he knows how to help us understand the things of God. I am so grateful that Dr. Howard John Wesley has so powerfully and passionately and intelligently explained to us what it means to know how real God is in the lives of those who will trust him. Thank you, sir, for coming this way again and for preaching the word of God with such power. We just sat over there and just marveled at how he was able to take the rich truths of the word of God, couple them with all the experiences that he has had in his own development, and then present them so powerfully and plainly to us. And I thank God for it. I've told you often, God never wastes an experience. And all the experiences that God took him through, even in his undergraduate journey, and even up until a car accident a few months ago, helped him to come into this place this Sunday morning and help us to be told afresh that God is real. Don't be no fool, don't be no fool, don't be no fool. Crystal Rucker, thank you so much for being with us today. We appreciate you, we thank you so much. She'll be here second service, right? She better be, amen, praise the Lord. And we're looking forward to that. Oh, I hate to let you go. There's certain services you just don't want to leave out of. I, this is one of those for me, I just don't want to go. I just want to hang, you want, got another sermon? You got two? All right, all right, never mind. I want the next one at the next service because you can't preach that again. Uh, I'm, uh, I do like they used to say back in the day, get the tape. Uh, th there is no tape, church. There's no tape anymore. Everybody, need, everybody needs to know. We, somebody asked me, can I get a tape of a service? No. You can get the link. <laughs> you can go on YouTube and press play. Uh, but everything is available for everybody at any point in time. You're going to need to go back and listen to this again because it was such a blessing. Amen. You know you got lost between hypothesis and law. You know you got lost. So you got to go back and write that thing down real slow. Wait. Hypothesis. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, we got to go back. Praise the Lord. I want to end church a little differently today. Is that all right? Can I do that? Uh, okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Lord, I will lift my eyes to the hills. Um, these 18 years of pastoral leadership have taught me that I can't handle life and ministry by myself. And even with a good task, a team rather, that is tasked to do the work of ministry, I can't handle it all by myself. I can't handle it even with their own strength. So I've learned to look to the hills from which cometh my help. <laughs> I was thinking about this getting ready for church this morning. All my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. I want us all to sing together. Put those words on the screen just in case somebody just got to church and uh, never, they've never seen this song before, heard this song that's like 30 years old. I want us to sing it together. Lord, I will lift my eyes. Sing, beloved. Lord.
Can we sing it again, please? Everybody, no music at all. Wednesday.